Hey guys, and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer board game review. Today's game up on the tabletop is by Hub Games, and it is powered by Story Cubes. It is Untold Adventures Await. In Untold Adventures Await, you're going to be playing as a storyteller of sorts, and they can play, play up to four players. It takes about an hour to play, and it's for ages 10 and up. In the game, you'll be utilizing these story cube dice here that you'll be rolling, and they will be giving you ideas to tell a story. With those dice, you're going to also have these different profiles for your characters, as well as your episode guide for your episode for your story, which players are going to each have their own and be adding stuff to the story as you play the game. It could start with a dangerous dilemma and then finally end with a final showdown, and they are all different based on the story that you're trying to tell, along with what it kind of leads you to do. It is a story storytelling game of sorts and it also has a game attached to it in which you're going to be able to utilize certain different chits to kind of stop the game to kind of add different things to the game and kind of create your own ideas with it uh, this game has additional stuff like a player board that tells you what all the different symbols do as along with the pause and play button that will kind of give you the idea the ability to if the story goes out of whack or changes in some way to try and stop and get the story back on track and it also has cards that you'll be utilizing randomly that will occur and change the way the story is being told based on what kind of pops up. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look at what everything comes in the game Untold Adventures Await, and then I will tell you what I think about it. So here's all the components for Untold Adventures Await powered by Story Cubes. And as you can see, there's quite a bit and I'll go over it all. The first thing is of course the box and the rule book that comes in the game that is a complete walkthrough of what you need to do in order to make your story. It also comes with these little different events that take place and their little tie here, they'll flip over and they'll say different things such as a location and one of these uh, things. And you can look at it here and say, okay, it's this threat. So this location, this threat, fights, and then this specific event, which is somebody or something. And you're going to be doing these step by step. They're also going to come with different uh, things that occur as, as, uh, as well as um, other different, these are all different things that you can either ask questions about or things that are going to occur like actions. They are also going to be getting two types of cards and they're going to be based on the actions you take so they can be successful or they can be red and be unsuccessful and they're also going to have buts ands and blanks so they are also going to involve certain things and when you get the dot dot dots you'll be going ahead and drawing one of these things that are basically just uh, different faces that the uh, game is trying to give you an idea of what happens in these events there's going to be uh, two four six eight and nine different story cubes that you can use in the game and then of course player boards they're going to have all the different player references here the pause button and the play button, meaning the story is going on or the story is not going on. Two ideas that you can add when you want. One flashback that you can add to the game or something you can modify. So when something happens, you can choose to modify that thing. You're going to be adding one of each of these to this board here and the rest you will not be using. And these are for additional sets of players. You can play all by yourself or with multiple players. It also gives you episode guides and character profiles. Everybody's going to get their own character, which is going to have their name, their job, uh, what what compels you to go on specific adventures, and then your specials that can change episode to episode. You get to start off with uh, two with two different things, such as uh, some kind of power and then some kind of uh, expertise or knowledge that you'll write down, as well as the status of those powers and expertises. Uh, maybe you're going to be a digger, for instance, that is very good at exploding things and also has a knowledge of me complex mechanics. And then after you've gone ahead and wrote, wrote, wrote that out, you're going to wait to uh, write down your iconic role that happens after the seventh episode episode, as well as creating your first episode, the series name, the episode title, the season, and the episode. Episode settings, these are all things you're going to include, the who, what, when, and where, as well as the uh, setting synopsis. At the end of the episode is when you're going to add the after episode credit stuff, and of course the episode notes, like people of interest, that you won't do until afterwards. But uh, after you've written all your, all your stuff down that is in the white portion, and gotten your player boards, as well as your tokens and your play button, then you're going to begin by flipping over one of these and it's going to start from left to right uh, when this pops up you're going to be rolling these dice here what are what, you know all, all the things here and then you're going to be selecting them so i'll go ahead and roll these out and then you're going to go ahead and say okay this location so maybe you're thinking that it's going to take place somewhere at a park so you can go ahead and use this fountain if you want and then of course you can go ahead and look at here and it says uh the threat so what could be a threat out of these things here maybe this is a sheep which could refer to anything maybe it's an animal or maybe you're thinking about this it's a turtle but it could also be a reptile and it could also be maybe a crocodile so We'll put that in there as well. And then it's going to be, so at the park, you're fighting a crocodile. 
uh, and uh, it, it, uh, something or something is a fight. So maybe this crocodile fights something or some someone. And so you're going to be making a story based on this. You can go ahead and ask questions. Players can take these off the board and ask questions and also attempt to do actions. When they attempt to do actions, they're going to say specifically what they want to do. I want to try and uh, blow up the turtle with my dynamite. And so these cards are going to be shuffled. These are the outcomes of your actions as well as the potential reactions that may, may occur as well. And you're going to flip them over and see what happens. This one says it's unsuccessful because it's red, but an event occurs and it was a sad event. So instead of blowing up the crocodile, they in fact blew up the person that was fighting the crocodile maybe. And that can change the story as to how it goes. And that's because it's also a sad event and these guys will go away. So for each of the different actions you take place, you're gonna flip over the outcomes and reactions. When all of the actions are removed, you're gonna go on to the next portion of the story, flipping that over and seeing what it is. This one here specifically is an evil ally that gets added. You'll be taking these dice here and rolling them to see what your evil ally is. Maybe Bigfoot jumps into the mix in the park for some reason or another. And then you're going to tell the story like that. You're going to be adding any questions and when these are burnt you can go ahead and move on to the next one and continuing as such. All the different symbols are going to be on here to explain certain things. Ideas can pop up if you want saying oh I have an idea. I'm going to go ahead and play this and say and state something that involves the story in some way. Or the one of the characters maybe has a flashback in which you're going to be going ahead and using this which will influence the story as well. And then maybe a modifier to an action. So for instance, you blew, you may have blew up the person over here, uh, but however, luckily you were able to modify the reaction and it also kind of hurt the crocodile in some way. If the story goes out of bounds or starts to make less sense, you can pause the game in which you can go ahead and discuss certain things and then restart the game back up. And all players are going to continue this until they get to the very end, which will be the final showdown. As you roll dice, the dice are going to slowly run out and you'll be adding them to these spaces here. You can also go ahead and utilize dice from the board that were in past different parts of the story. So maybe uh, maybe the uh, park is going to make another reoccurrence here and could potentially make another reoccurrence over here at the final showdown. And of course, all of these have different symbols, potentially as well as they do different things involving the different characters. After the episode is over, something has happened, you're going to then go ahead and write down the impact and follow all the after episode stuff, as well as adding any modifiers to the, your characters based on what occurred, and players are going to continue there. After that, you can go ahead and choose to do another episode and continue the story, or create a completely new story with completely new people, if that's something you want to do as well. Overall, it's a storytelling game in which you continue to play throughout the game, utilizing these cues and making decisions as they come up with the outcomes and reactings affecting certain things in the game. Successful and uh, you wouldn't need this, but if it had a but, you'd flip that over. But something like this happened, and it gives you kind of the ability to make up your own mind as to how things occur with all of the, uh, the required or needed things that uh, gives your creative juices flowing. Anyway, let's come up and talk about Untold Adventures Away and see what I thought about it. All right, so a caveat first before I get into the review as well as what happened in one of my stories. You have these cards here, which are your outcomes, right? And there is a red and a green but. These are basically an, an unsuccessful and a successful event happening. However, the opposite occurs potentially. So for instance, maybe in this specific event failed, but you end up getting a silver shiny coin. Or this succeeded very well, however you ended up losing a silver coin. You also have the critical fat success and critical failure cards, which are the ands. Not only did you fail, but you also blew off your leg. Or not only did you succeed in the, making your contraption, but you also figured out a new way to make an obtainium. Some pretty cool ideas. Um, but those are some of the ways you can kind of can kind of determine how the cards work. You can, of course, make up your own ideas as far as they go, specifically also with the reactions, because they're just going to be simple faces that kind of change how you want to tell the story based on what those symbols or faces look like. So our first episode, we actually made uh, one, of, I'll show you just one of the episodes we made from this series of Forsaken City Unearthing the Tomb. At season one, episode one, set in the dystopian future in an underground city with high tech and that no one is allowed to leave. It's a dark, gloomy thriller and a controlling patriarchal ruler follow, uh, forces the 
inhabitants to dig deeper for precious metals to continue building the city. Uh, it has the after episodes, which I'll talk about in a second, but we have two main characters, my own character, of course, and uh, Grant, my cameraman's character. Uh, we have Jaren Steelman and Doug the Digger. I'm a metal worker, and uh, he has the ability of a cyber cybernetic left arm, and he can repair broken technology. I'm a demolitions expert with a utility belt with explosive devices. Mine is after, uh, my, my what compels me to go on adventures is after working at the metal recycling facility, boredom has worn me out and made me wonder what else there might be in this life. And uh, Doug just simply wants to gain more knowledge to gain more power. Um, and of course, they have the statuses of those different things. They're all in good standing to start with. That's usually how it works. And uh, the end of the episode, certain things happen to which you got on your board. Uh, as you continue explaining things as they go on. So for instance, we all were digging in the mines, trying to gain new things. The mine collapsing, we found an uh, empty tunnel that had a bunch of scorpion monsters that came out that we had to fight. We opened up this additional like new tunnel, finding there's another city by one of the council members of the city that controlled it. And, <laughs> and that council council member was trying to build his own unique side thing he's working on that the other council didn't know about and we uncovered the secret we had to fight the final boss he ended up escaping and the uh, scorpions we ended up destroying just in time escaping from the bottom of the mine uh, getting back to the top of the city now chasing after the the evil evil council member however uh and well the, the next episode continues but you get the idea right and then we're going to write down the episode notes at the end of what are characters of interest maybe it's the company the ceo potentially hidden slaves that are working in the mines uh even surviving uh we we survived the, the different uh, bad guys, I suppose. Interest, interesting things is like the high-tech mining weapons that we found. There was an elevator at the bottom of the shaft and, of course, the scorpions. Places of interest, we have the caverns, we have the mining facility, we have the uh, dig site, and we have the ruined storehouse, which we end up finding. And uh, so that is the basic idea. We can also we also changed our characters. We get new abilities for each episode and the uh, potential to gain more powers and whatnot that kind of come with your character or maybe not even powers but just different things that you end up getting whether it be character traits or whether it be something like a shiny alien ray gun but anyway the the untold adventures awaits is an amazing storytelling game it has beautiful components all of the artwork is based on symbology which is great because it lets your mind uh flow some creative juices go and you're able to kind of manufacture a story with a template that helps you progress the story not only that but the story cube here, which I had seen previously but never actually played with. I thought they were just kind of whatever. But as I played with these, I started to see how amazing these things really are, how much fun they are. And the first thing I started thinking after the first episode we did was, I wish I had even more dice to switch out. And luckily enough, you could purchase story cubes if you want on their own and add them to this game, much like certain things like Mysterium and Dixit. You can do the same thing with those cards. But giving you the ideas from these dice was so fun, so helpful, and so unique and interesting that I really, really liked that aspect. Your player boards and all that was high quality, and it felt like you were making ideas when you played these things. Like, I have a great idea. Oh, but I only have one of these idea cubes left, or idea chits left. Do I actually want to use it for this specific idea? Is it worth it? This would be a great time for a flashback. I'm going to have to imp implement that, or I'd like to modify this action because I have a really good idea for the next portion of the story. Or maybe you simply have this great idea where you want to do this specific thing, so you take this action, and it occurs, this terrible result happens and you end up blowing up a bunch of people or you end up hurting yourself or maybe you just don't get that that, that happenstance that you wanted maybe a prize or whatnot and it changes the story throughout the game so that you're kind of not telling the story you originally thought you were going to tell which is an also really interesting creative aspect to the game the fact that it comes with quite a few of these episodes as well as character profiles is nice because it has a lot of replayability in this game just with what it has along with the additional tiles that change the game up it comes with six for each of the different portions of the game and there's five of them and this is definitely enough for what you need overall an exciting storytelling game my favorite storytelling game i've played and i've played quite a few and i do include arabian nights in there arabian nights is an excellent storytelling slash choose your own adventure game i've also played uh the once upon a time game which i find to be pretty fun as well this one gives you more intact it, it, it gives you that more of a, like a structured feel to it along with the ability to let you have let you have your creative juices without somebody else uh, taking up all of their all the juices because you have only a specific amount of ideas you can utilize and actions that are available per, per each of the sections so that you can kind of add on or not add on as much as you'd like overall untold adventures away is an excellent game hub games you did an excellent job with this i'm excited to see more and i'm excited to continue playing my specific episode of 
Forsaken City. This is my Unfiltered Gamer seal of approval for sure. Bam! Excellent game. Do check it out if you love storytelling games.